part two of Prince Igor from the Met. So after Mystica, Miss uh, Rachel Shvili, the tenor, I'm going to get this wrong, I'm sure, Sergei Semishkor, we have other singers as well, two other prominent male roles. Uh, in the role of Prince Kalitsky was Mikhail Petrenko. I had heard from someone who was at the dress rehearsal that his voice wasn't that large. However, on the broadcast and on the HD screen, his voice was fine. It filled the house. I really enjoyed his singing. He was snarly and just so unlikable in the good sense of the word. He has a fantastic aria. And again, I was disappointed because it's a drinking song and it's got lots of Russian flavor to it. It just didn't have enough for me. Finally, in the smaller role of Khan Konchak is a very popular basso whose name is Stefan Kochan. I've heard him several times and I have not been such a fan of his. Well, I have to say that yesterday, listening on the HD, I thought he was terrific. So maybe he's one of these voices that doesn't always translate well when reproduced or produced um, electronically through microphones. And perhaps in the house, I would like his voice much better. I'd like to say something about the singing overall. It was so terrific to have all these Russian singers singing in the same program. A, a common complaint I have from, especially from productions when, unfortunately, when the City Opera was in existence, is that they would put together a terrific cast, but everybody had a different technique. This one was from London, this one was from Italy, from the United States, from Korea, and they all had wonderful voices, but they sounded like they were from different countries. Here, not only did we have all Russian or Slavic voices, they blended so well together. That added to the overall experience of the music, making it sound so Russian. Then I just can't say enough about the chorus. I had no idea until I heard the broadcast uh, a while ago that the choral part is so prominent in this opera. Bravo, kudos, everything to the chorus members who had to memorize this uh, in Russian, a language they don't do that often, and in an opera that I know none of them have done before at the Met. So, really great job. The orchestra. You know, I consider the Metropolitan Opera to be the National Opera Company. I mean, it's the one that we all talk about. Uh, there's no other company in the country that has as large and varied a season as the Met has. And the orchestra is fantastic. And I have to go back and say thank you, Mr. James Levine, for bringing up the standard of the orchestra to where it is today. It is very recognized as one of the greatest orchestras in the world. And each time I go to the Met or hear a broadcast or go to the theater to, for, for an HD presentation, I'm reminded, boy, are we lucky to have this. So, although he wasn't conducting, thank you, Mr. Levine, for making the orchestra what it is, national treasure. And then we come to the conductor, John Andrea Noseda. What an interesting week I've had with Mr. Noseda. Last Sunday, I went to hear him conduct the Pittsburgh Symphony, and then on Saturday during the daytime, I was in my theater in Pittsburgh watching him conduct from New York, and at 8 o'clock, I was at uh, Heinz Hall in Pittsburgh to hear him conduct the Pittsburgh Symphony Orchestra. Does that man ever sleep? He is a tremendous conductor, but I did feel that... Um, the tempi were a little slow, and I thought there was a little more enthusiasm in the whole orchestral playing the night, the opening night. Yesterday, I, I felt that the tempos were a little held back. I felt things were a little drawn out, but maybe that's just me. After all, I'm not an expert on this opera, and 
I don't know that anybody in the general listening public is either, especially in the form that it was presented. So overall, I would like to borrow a phrase from a friend of mine. It was an afternoon of missed opportunities. The drinking song could have had so much more to it. The Polovetsian dances could have been just a, a feast of color and rapture. Uh, the acting and singing, I have absolutely not one thing to say negative about it. And the orchestra and chorus, bravo to all of you. And thank you to the Met for making these available. Right now, the Met is in a maelstrom of, uh, of negotiations with the unions. There's always talk about the disappointing seasons, the Met isn't this, the Met isn't that. Let's look at it for what it is. It's a great opera house. They get some of the greatest singers in the world. And we, in all parts of the country, have an opportunity, even if we have to travel a little bit, to see these productions, to see as many as they choose to present. So I'm not quite through with the Met this year because uh, a week from this Tuesday, I will be in the Met Opera House to hear and see Werther with Jonas Kaufmann and Sophie Koch. They were on one of the intermission features and um, that was another highlight for me for the for the afternoon to hear Mr. Kaufman speak about doing Berter. So hopefully I'll enjoy that. It's also a new production. Uh, and there's one more thing I'd like to say about all of these talks and reviews. These are just my opinions. And whether you realize it or not, when you when you read a newspaper, whether it's by Anthony Tomasini, the reviewer from the New York Times, or a reviewer from the Financial Times. These are just their opinions. Now, maybe their opinions are based on more education than what I have, but it doesn't make them any more right or wrong, and neither are my opinions. They're not right or wrong. So if you loved it, and you thought the production was absolutely fantastic, and it made total sense to you, great! But that wasn't how I felt. Okay, everybody. Have a great rest, rest of the weekend.